with the throne of evil which creates with the throne of iniquity which creates evil by law have fellowship with you God never but the throne of righteousness and the throne of purity has fellowship with you I pray you would strike down the throne of evil in our nation in our capital now I pray again I say these words would the throne of iniquity have fellowship with Yahweh no the throne of iniquity that creates evil by law the throne of iniquity has endeavored to create evil by law cannot have fellowship with the throne of grace in this nation you will not allow it therefore hear the prayer and the cries of your people today I pray I pray Hello friends, I'm Donna Clement Petrushka, and I am honored to invite you to something truly extraordinary, the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Now you can gain unprecedented access to my father's entire digitized video archive, every prophetic moment, every powerful teaching, every anointed worship session is now available to you in the Prophecy Vault. We've also enhanced the Prophecy Database, meticulously updating it with new video content and profound insights. Plus, I'm excited to share that my dad's special School of the Prophets teachings are included, offering you deep, transformative lessons on hearing God's voice and understanding His revelations. As part of your membership, you'll also gain access to my Prophecy blog where I break down and analyze my father's prophecies, connecting them to current events. This blog will provide you with exclusive insights and a deeper understanding of how God's word is unfolding right now. And we're offering something truly special, exclusive analysis sessions available only to members of the Prophecy Vault. These sessions will go beyond the surface providing in-depth exploration of specific prophecies and their implications for today and the future. Your partnership is crucial. Not only will you gain access to these incredible resources, but you'll also help us continue the vital work of preserving, digitizing, and adding new Kim Clement material to the archives. So, I'm inviting you to step into the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Let's embark on this journey of revelation together, and I can't wait to see you inside. Everybody, welcome to Code Breakers Analysis. I have Christy Desfontaine with me again today, and we are coming up upon the most important election, I think, of our lifetimes, maybe even in the history of this country at this stage. Yeah. And uh, so we have some prophecy to share with you today. Um, very, very powerful um, that that, uh, that our team found. And we have featured on Prophetic Rewind before, so some of you will remember this. But, um, uh, you know, as we, as we draw closer to November 5th, uh, we really are focusing on what was prophesied and uh, what is going on around us and what are we seeing happen. And uh, so, Christy, do you have anything you want to share, though, before we before we play the prophecies. You know, Donna, it's been a, I know that like a lot of people are tired of talking about Israel, but it's been a rough week in Israel. Um, it appears that there's some kind of mole because a Golani brigade of soldiers was hit while they were all sitting in the cafeteria and 68 soldiers 
were wounded, some of them have died, some of them are in critical c- condition. And so, you know, just thinking about the, uh, I think every person has a hill that they'll die on when it comes to voting, when it comes to policy, when it comes to the elections. And we are going to be really focusing in on the election up until it happens because we are called to pray and we're called to do. And, you know, I know exactly where Kim would be if he was here right now. And we're going to be in D.C. Donna, Charlie and I are going to D.C. in the next two weeks. And we're going to be standing there on the ground, boots on the ground, praying, doing all the things. But really, for me, the most critical issue is Israel. And so part of what we're going to do, we're going to show you some incredible prophecy and then go through some of the main voting issues. And for me, I know the hill that I will always be prepared to die on is Israel. And we need an administration that's going to protect and defend Israel. And that's going to support Israel's right to protect and defend itself. And uh, that is a, a huge key issue. I know not just for me, I know that it's on the heart of God as well. And so that's what I'm going to say. I know we're going to play some stuff, Donna, and then we can get into, I've got I've got a little voting guide here to read through to you of some of the key issues and who stands in opposition and who stands in support. And so we're going to talk about that, but I think we're probably going to go ahead and play this clip first. Yes, and I just want to say to, you know, um, we are in a time of war, not just spiritual war, yes. but there is physical war happening in Israel. And the thing that we need to keep in our hearts is the promises that God has given us, yes. especially through things that my dad prophesied and saw and, and, and the things that God would do in the United States of America and Israel at the same time. And we're starting to see more and more and more of these prophecies come to pass. And I'm telling you, my dad's track record Oof. has been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, when he was alive, we thought we thought we were getting it when he was alive. But yeah. now we truly see how prophecy works. And I have learned so much through this experience. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. without having dad here has forced yeah. us into a position uh, to where we've really had to be on our faces before God and really seeking Him. And we we have done that. And all of you here who've supported us here at the House of Destiny, you've been on this journey with us. And here we are in 2024 and we are, uh, we are coming upon that moment. And, you know, many people are struggling. I know I am. A lot of people are struggling through. The enemy has been attacking our families and yeah. our relationships and our finances. And, and um, you know, the other day, even on Codebreakers Live, I was talking about the American people, no matter which side they're on, have been traumatized. And it's been truly a different kind of war. Remember, Dad prophesied a new kind of war and an enemy from within. And so that's something we're going to look at today. And so um, the first prophecy we have to play for you is from July 5th of 2014. Now, you remember, here we are again. It's 10 years ago. And it was right after Independence Day. I think all of those things are, are, are important to take note of when we look at these prophecies. It's not just what was prophesied, but when and where. So again, we have that 10 years ago, this was prophesied. And so let's go ahead and play the prophecy and then we'll come back and have, have a chat about it. Would the throne of evil, which creates Would the throne of iniquity, which creates evil by law, have fellowship with you? God, never. But the throne of righteousness and the throne of purity has fellowship with you. I pray you would strike down the throne of evil in our nation, in our capital, Now, I pray, again I say these words. Would the throne of iniquity have fellowship with Yahweh? No. The throne of iniquity that creates evil by law. The throne of iniquity has endeavored to create evil by law. Cannot have fellowship with the throne of grace in this nation. You will not allow it. 
Therefore hear the prayer and the cries of your people today. I pray. I pray. Today. Whew. You want to talk about a prophetic prayer? Oof. You would think in that moment he was praying for then. He was praying for now. us now. Yes, he was. He saw the future yes. and was already praying then and hearing our cry now. Yes. That was so powerful. So powerful. My goodness gracious. Um, Again, um, Donna, I'll let you go the, first, Christy. I've got so many thoughts. <laughs> There's so many things, there's so many, you know, times when, again, in the moment you think, okay, what is this about? But now, in hindsight, looking back, you realize what it is that he was seeing. God was showing your, your dad the future. He was showing him things. And I know that sometimes in the moment, your dad didn't even know when it was for. He just knew it was something that he saw. He didn't necessarily have the timeline and know exactly when. But this is the point. This is the thing that's so important about preserving the legacy of Kim Clement because his words are still living. There are still things that he said that are coming to pass even now. There's such an importance to preserving his legacy. And we're gonna play you another clip of Kim's in just a moment where he actually does his own kind of analysis of what it is that he prophesied. And we're gonna to go to that video clip in just a second, but I just wanted to encourage you, you know, as we're going into this time of election season, everything is crazy, everything is chaotic. We have to know that we're listening to the voice of God. And when you support this ministry, when you give to this ministry, you are helping us continue the legacy and the voice of Kim Clement. There's a red link below your player that you can click to follow that and just know, think about this. The word that we just watched was from 2014. It's for us right now here in 2024 or 2015 and we're now in 2024. We're talking about nine or 10 years ago. When Kim was prophesying, it was into the future. It was for you and I today, right now. And so when you give, when you support, you too are sowing into the future. You're sowing into something that is eternal. You're sowing into history. And so I'm encouraging you to do that. You know, I'm encouraging you to do it with a cheerful heart because we're those people who are able to, when God looks down on the earth, we're those who are able to say it's us. We're the ones who are building the wall. We're the ones who are standing up on behalf of the people and building the wall. We are those people. We are those warriors who are fighting forward, fighting now for the future. And you're helping preserve a legacy that really, I don't know that we can ever truly measure the, the depth and the treasure that we have, a way that you can do that as well. Again, we're about to go to another video from Kim, so don't go away. You can join our partnership program. For $7 or more a month, you have access to an incredible uh, partnership. It's, you know, the entire prophecy database with new and improved features for searching the prophecy database of Kim's. We've got all the old broadcasts up there that you can go and watch. There's exclusive behind the scene uh, footage. And then there's extra code breakers analysis, extra blog posts, so much extra. So practically by supporting us, you're helping further the legacy of Kim Clement and you're getting access to everything that he said and prophesied for all those years for $7 or more a month. So I'm encouraging you to do that. But Donna, I'll go to you now. And I know we've got this other video of your dad's to play as well. Yes, and, and I do encourage everybody. I'm so excited about this partnership program. This is something we've worked on for a while now and we wanted to make sure it was just perfect for all of you and for us too because I love it so much as well and and it is it is the 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 collecting of these prophecies and understanding them and it's it's not something we can do you know I can't do it alone Christy can't do it alone but when we come together there's a picture uh, Dad used to used to say it's like a it was like a tapestry, and at the end we would have an image that we would be able to look at almost like a. T I love how he called it a tapestry, and so it's very important to us uh, that we're able to have that gathered together, and you're a part of helping us uh, build that, understand that, have the insight and the discernment needed, and so it's something we're doing together, and that's that's a theme that I keep seeing. I believe that God wants is. You know, my dad's prophesied before about how there would be this great move, uh, this great thing happen, a revolution, he even called it. And he said it wouldn't come from one ministry or one denomination 
or one person, um, that, that God would be moving everywhere and, and he would be in the streets and in the marketplace and, 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 and in the homes, little flames and little homes. And, and so that's what this, this partnership is and that's what this ministry is doing. It's, it's a big part of, of who we are. And, um, you know, through our, our travels, you know, Christy and, and I are going to be going with the team to the Reawaken America tour. Um, we'll be there of, over this weekend now. And um, uh, um, that's also been a, a huge unexpected thing that happened and also another thing that was prophesied. And so we are that remnant that my dad saw. But, um, uh, you know, when I'm looking at this prophecy and you see how he made that, uh, the analogy, he's, he, the throne of iniquity cannot have fellowship with the throne of grace. And so you see the conflict. And as we look at how this, uh, this election is, is unfolding, it is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. And always again and again and again, we're hearing about this law and that law and these rights and that rights. And we found that we've sort of been bound up by law and, and God is intervening. And um, I think it's so interesting him seeing the capital as well. Uh, considering uh, what occurred in 2020 and with January 6th and everything that's come out about all of that um, and, and, and what the capital is, where the laws are made. Um, this is very, very important. And it's also important to remember as we've gone through over the past few months, as Christy and I have gone through these, these prophecies, we've seen uh, also in 2014, on February 22nd, he, he prophesied not only about the overturning of Roe versus Wade and things that would happen in the Supreme Court, but also about them packing the court. Um, uh, the way he worded it was, well, he didn't use that terminology because he didn't even know it. And like you said earlier, he didn't always understand everything he was seeing, but he just boldly prophesied it. And so you see again and again uh, them trying to change laws and, and, and make laws that often don't even make sense. And I don't know about you, Christy, but as I'm, I'm watching, um, uh, there's just outright hypocrisy and lying it's happening. It's unbelievable. That's becoming undeniable. The <laughs> fact that he called it it's iniquity. Just, it's it's a, quite shocking. It's a strong word, you yeah. know, the visual imagery of iniquity. I think about, you know, the, the Jesus speaking to the churches in the book of Revelation and speaking about these rulers with iniquitous hearts or, you know, the word iniquity when it's used, it speaks of a, it, it's like a dense kind of evil. And he's speaking about them wanting to do that in law. And I, I don't think you can really deny that that's absolutely been done to a degree and that there's an attempt to do more of, of this, which is part of the issues that we're going to read through, you know, after we play this other video is like, the overturn of Roe v. Wade, taxpayer-funded taxpayer abortions, these sorts of things, who stands where and how should we as Christians vote? This is something that we have to pay attention to because like your dad prophesied, we are talking and about- And also that Christians do vote. Yes, very important. Because we cannot afford to be apathetic. This, Christy, but, yeah, right. And this is something I, I, I keep talking about, uh, you know, everywhere I go is, uh, because I didn't know this until recently, uh, but uh, in general, Christians uh, don't vote, as well as gun owners, something I recently discovered. And uh, I don't understand why that is. Um, uh, you and I, being from South Africa, uh, the chance to vote in America, oh, we understand huge. as legal immigrants. Yeah, I wish I could. Like, wish. And so, um, you know, I, I see a lot of people trying to, especially church leaders trying to sort of, we're staying out of politics, we don't want to be involved. But this is not the time for that because, no. as you were just pointing out, it cannot the be kinds apathetic. of laws that are being put into place, uh, the way that they've opened up the border under the guise of compassion, there is not, I mean, they have lost over 300,000 children and there's, there's nothing compassionate about that. Mm -mm. That is not a road to 
uh, any kind of an American dream no. for any of those people coming. And along with the, 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 all of the people coming, they're allowing, who knows, terrorists are coming It's horrifying. In, people from prisons. A lot of prisons, yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean all the people are bad people. They'll say, oh, well, you don't get... No, but it doesn't mean all of the people. But it's not an overwhelming... But if you have... It's not women and children, Donna. This is not women and children coming in, you know... It's different. We're talking about military-aged fighting men. And the women and children that have come in, I've seen enough to know that the women and children that have come in, terrible things have happened. Oh, yeah. Because there's no structure to it, and it's it's quite cruel what is happening to you. And so for everyone involved in this situation, um, it is it is... It is, again, under the guise of compassion. Mm. Uh, uh, and this is how they got people with abortions in the beginning, was what about uh, victims of rape and incest? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a very tiny percentage of abortions. And so using that, they then have passed laws uh, that uh, are allowing babies to be aborted to full term and in some places even after birth. And this is unthinkable. If you think of my mom and dad when they were going to China and adopting the the, the children, remember under the one child law when China used to have that. And they used to have, they had the crying room where the child Mm. was born and they would leave it to cry in the crying room to die. And that's what got my mother's heart and got her active in, in, uh, um, in, in the adoptions. And well, that was part of the reason. And so, uh, but we do have more to play for you. And we want, we want you guys to hear uh, what my dad had to say after he prophesied this, because he did do his own uh, his own yes. analysis of it, and it's very important that we that we see and hear this now. So let's play that. The Spirit of God just spoke. The Spirit of God addressed the capital of the United States of America, and therefore, it, it seems to me that there is a a throne. I, I caught a glimpse of a throne of iniquity, creating evil by law. Now we know we've seen that happen with abortion. We've seen that happen with many things. But let me say this to you today. God said, would that throne of iniquity that creates evil by law have fellowship with me at the throne of grace? Never. Then who is it that is able to shake? Who is it that is able to literally shake the altar and move heaven and open it up? The saints of the Most High God, the people who understand righteousness, the people who understand what moves God. There is a throne of righteousness. There is a throne of grace that creates laws of righteousness. Let it be, O God, from this weekend. Let something change that we may see it. Let the summer be as the winter. I pray today. God is saying there is no fellowship with the laws that have been and that are being created for evil in this nation. I can hear some of you saying, enough! We have seen too much, but God has spoken that He would shake and that it would change. It almost seems impossible. But I pray for this nation. The United States of America shall not fall. However America goes, the rest of the world goes. I'm telling you, he has huge plans, but he has to strike down the throne of iniquity that is endeavoring to have fellowship with the leaders of the United States of America to create laws. It shall not happen. God will not allow the throne of iniquity God will not allow the throne of iniquity to have fellowship with the throne of grace. The throne of iniquity that creates evil by laws. God has one law. That law shall come into into being. We pray for it for America. We pray for it for our nation. So, my goodness, you know he's 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 shouting at us through time, yes, literally yes. shouting at us and yes. for us. Yes. And you know what he 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 where he said that where he asks the question because he then again says he talks about the throne of iniquity. Yes. And uh, he asks who will shake the altar, and that's exactly what we were just saying to you. Yes. All of the Christians. Who, who are saying, who don't usually vote, who, who, who might be saying, no, I don't want we to vote, I don't want to get to. involved. We are those people. Shaping. And you heard him saying, and he, said, he was saying, some are saying enough. 
And don't we all feel that way yes. because of the things that we've seen? Because how many times did he prophesy about exposures, exposures oh in gosh. leadership, exposures in the entertainment industry, in the intelligence agencies? We have seen so many things exposed and it has been so shocking and awful that, it, again, it, it, to do nothing is, is, is wrong. Donate. To sit back, we... I believe is wrong. I agree. And I think your dad was issuing a call to rise up through time. And so just a couple of these issues that yes. I'm going to point out. Again, I'm talking about for people who are Christians, who believe in Jesus, who believe that the bride of Christ as the church, we have a responsibility on the earth. The voter guide, the overturn of Roe v. Wade, Taxpayer-funded abortions, religious liberty, these are some of the things. The first thing is the overturn of Roe v. Wade. Obviously, as you know, President Trump supports it, Kamala Harris opposes it. When it comes to taxpayer-funded abortions, the use of taxpayer dollars to fund abortions and abortion providers, like Planned Parenthood, which means in essence we'd be the people paying for that, President Trump opposes it, Vice President Kamala Harris supports it. Transgender competition in sports, allowing students access to male or female sports based on their transgender identity rather than biological sex. President Trump of the Republican Party opposes this. Vice President Kamala Harris supports it. Taxpayer-funded gender transitions, using taxpayer dollars to fund gender transition procedures. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in surgeries for people to make a sexual transition or an identity transition. Obviously, President Trump opposes that. VP Kamala Harris supports it, meaning again, us as taxpayers would be the ones, our tax dollars would be going towards these things. So if you take an issue with any of this, but you're not voting, we don't really have a right to complain unless we're praying and unless we're actually voting. And then the other one that I just wanted to bring up, I'm not going to go through all of them, is the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. It's federal legislation defining and opposing anti-Semitism. President Trump has come out in support of this. There has been no stance taken from the Democrat presidential candidate. And so when we look at it, you know, with immigration, the United States should do more to physically protect and secure the southern border. President Trump agrees. Vice President Kamala Harris disagrees. When it comes to life, with few exceptions, abortion should be allowed throughout all nine months of pregnancy. President Trump disagrees, Kamala Harris agrees. We can't just sit around and complain and say that we're unhappy with the way things are going if we aren't actively participating to try and bring change. We have to be those. People like Dietrich Bonhoeffer didn't just sit back and complain about the totalitarianism that he was seeing in front of his eyes. He stood up, he rescued Jews, he did pay for it with his life, but that's not what most of us are going to be required to do. The vast majority of people are not called to martyrdom. What we're being asked to do is to stand up, to speak up, to pray, and to vote. That's what we are being asked to do. That's absolutely true. And you know, uh, he pointed out how he kept saying the United States of America and how it sh God's not going to allow this. But again, that requires of us, the people of God. Stand up. To, to be active. Faith yes. is action. Yes. He used uh, to it, sing it's that. It's fine to sit at home and pray also. Yeah, you remember, faith is action. Although yes, I, can, I do. I don't want to do that again. But, <laughs> That's the reason I didn't. <laughs> but as he said, the way... <laughs> the way he, but as you said, the way the United States of America goes, so goes the rest of yes. the world. And the whole world is watching very carefully yes. right now. Yes. Because how it happens here is how it's going to, if you're watching from somewhere else in the world and you think this isn't going to affect you, oh, yes, it is. It's going it, to affect it, everybody. It, how this goes will change the entire world. Now, we know we have a promise of victory. We know that God is not going to allow this. But we also know that we, we look, we've been put in a time of great humbling in, under this administration in the past four years. And my dad prophesied that, that that would happen. And he also prophesied, again, February 22nd of 2014, about how in darkness, faith grows and yes. in despair, faith grows. Yes. And that this is a place we find ourselves in. And, um, you know, in 2020, it was, it was, um, for us, it was a shock because 
especially me, I thought I had the, all those prophecies figured out. And boy, did God teach me some lessons about prophecy. Yeah. I thought, oh, I followed my dad. I was there. I saw him my whole life. I thought I understood. I did not understand to the depth that I do now. And so it, it is very important that we are not, you know, there are some who, will, who make statements. I see it on social media. Oh, get your popcorn and watch the show. No. We're not watching a show. We are going to be involved and we are actively going to do something together yes. to save not only the United States of America, but the rest of the world. And God is the one who will get the credit in the yes, end, not will. even Donald Trump. No, it's God. God is the one who will get the credit for this. Yes. And, and you know, I, I do see that humility in Donald Trump, you know, when he speaks about the assassination attempts and he gives the credit to God. And you'll see when he speaks publicly, he gives credit to God. And that is so important to God that your, the, your leader says his name and gives him the credit. Mm. And I mean God, give God the credit. And so um, you, the United States of America, it is time to be united under God. Yes. And one thing you can do, and maybe the only thing you can do, is vote. Yes. And so as we go into this election season, you know, we continue to pray for everybody because I know everybody's struggling in different ways. Yeah. There's people in North Carolina who have lost everything. everything. People in Florida who have lost everything. My, remember my dad in the season's prophecy, he prophesied about the hurricanes that would come. The hurricanes, why they choose me. Yes. And uh, the things that would be exposed as a result of these, of these happenings. And so we have seen things occur that we've never seen in the history of this country. And uh, we, we need to be aware. We, we cannot be complacent. And we need to understand that there is physically a war happening. It is happening, mm. especially in the, like I said earlier, in the minds of the American people. The minds and the hearts and the souls of the American people have been attacked in a way that we've never seen. And, and then you have the physical, actual wars happening. Mm. If you look in Israel, if you look in the Middle East, the Israel is the only ally we have there. Oh, yeah. And if, if, if that were to be lost, uh, and this is the foolishness of people, is they don't understand, especially the young people here in America, who again, under the guise of compassion, think that they're standing up for something that they do not understand. It is a no. great deception that has happened. And it is part of the Fourth Reich that Dad prophesied, this rise of this Fourth Reich as we look at laws about anti-Semitism and, and the propaganda that we've seen, which is unacceptable and unimaginable to me. Yeah. But to some people, they, they, those who, 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 who don't know God or those who, who are weak or those who just are uninformed, uh, many people are so busy with their lives and trying to survive that it's easy to get pulled into deception. And you wonder, how did the German people, surely all the German people weren't bad people. How could they have been okay with what had happened? Well, it's because of things like this. And this is, this is how the enemy infiltrates. And there has been an infiltration from within. And we've seen the corruption in the leadership in this country. And the one thing we can do about it is vote that corruption yeah. out. And so this is what our appeal to you today is to look at these prophecies. They are lights in the darkness. They're mm -hmm. little lights along the path that show us in a time when it can be very difficult for some. Wait a minute. God is in control of this, but he does require of us. Yes. And so I think essentially that is, that is what we, we are, the message we're wanting to get across to yes. everybody today. And um um, again, we do encourage all of you to stay tuned to what we're doing here because every single day of the week, we have got something and it's all tied in with, it, with everything else. Every single broadcast we bring to you every day of the week at the House of Destiny Network, my father set this up prophetically. And so you'll see here, Christy and I are doing Code Breakers um, and, and analysis, an analysis every Saturday with you. And then I'm going live with you guys on Sundays. And Christy is bringing you every Friday news from Israel, from the ground, helping you to understand what is going on. Because, you know, a lot of us don't understand the Jewish people and the, and, 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 and the different feasts and the different things. You know, a lot of people don't understand it. And Christy is here 
to help you to understand the significance of these things and what they mean for us as Christians yeah. as well. Because we do need to, the time has come for us to, to have that deeper understanding. And those of you who have been on this journey with us, many of you before with my father and then through losing him and then continuing on with us because we know everything that he prophesied was for the future. It wasn't just for the moment then, it was for us now. And so don't miss these things because every Monday we do Prophetic Rewind and I am praying every single week, what are we going to release on Prophetic Rewind that will help the people? And so we do that. And then Tuesday, we've got real life, real faith, where we can get down into the, the day-to-day struggles that people have and really help people. And, and every Wednesday, we've got church with Fa. And let me tell you, we need that church time as well. And we need to hear from Pastor Fa, who my father chose uh, as a pastoral voice for this ministry. And he's truly anointed to pray with you and to help you. And then, of course, we, every other Thursday, we've got Charlie Jordan, who ministered with my dad. Every time you saw my dad prophesying, there was Charlie Jordan behind him with the bass. And Charlie has insights and perspective uh, that others don't. And so it's very important to hear from him as well. So don't miss everything that we have. We stream this and we, we, we load it up. You can download our app. If, you don't, if you're not watching on the app right now, you can download the app and you can even download that app on your Roku TV, which is what I do. And you can watch it on your television or on your device, however you watch. But don't miss every single day of the week, we've got something for you. And again, this is something my dad set up and this is something my mother has made sure to continue. And so you, don't, you haven't seen her here on Saturdays uh, because she really understood the, the need to analyze these prophecies. And she really has, and I have to share this with you guys, She's really had a little bit of a hard time uh, with uh, the adopted, my adopted brothers and sisters, uh, especially Matt has been back in the hospital. He had a surgery earlier this year. He had some complications and uh, a pretty bad infection and he had to go back into the hospital. He's been put on um, a drip pick line IV, which is an IV antibiotics that he's, he's got on him. And so please pray for, for Matt and then uh, my sister Kimby, many of you already know Kimby. Uh, if you don't know Kimby, she has a heart condition, only part of her heart works. And she's had multiple open heart surgeries. She has got pneumonia in one of her lungs right now. So my mother is caring for those children that, that her and my father adopted, that God gave these children under the one child law in China when, when, when uh, they were forcing abortions there and they had the crying rooms and the most terrible things going on. God called my mother and father to reach into China and not only help those children the way many of you did at the time, but those children adopt them and take them into our home. And they're my brothers and sisters. And my mother still cares for them. And that's where she's been. And so please pray for her and remember her because you're not seeing her on the camera. She'll be back, but you're not seeing her right now because she's caring for them. And so we really do need your prayer and support in regards to them because they're growing and they're doing well, but they have, where there has been a bit of a struggle. And we know that, you know, something that was on Prophetic Rewind a couple of weeks ago, my dad talked about when, when something that he prophesied came to pass is when the enemy would attack him the most and when he would be harassed by the enemy the most. And so you see this, we've seen this starting to emerge in our own homes and lives. And many of you are gonna see it too, as these prophecies come to pass. And as we come closer to this election, it is going to become more intense and it's going to get more difficult. And so we need to remember to lift one another up in prayer and support one another and be united in this because that is where we are strong. Our unity under God and our vote. So make sure that you, if you have the ability to do that, that you vote. And um, uh, again, don't uh, don't miss out on our partnership program because we have so much uh, in there. And again, we worked so hard on it. And you, you're helping us to preserve, to build and then preserve a legacy of something that happened in history that will be remembered in the future as something that God did through us, through my dad and then through all of us. And uh, also anybody who's given a gift today, um, uh, it, we have the daily light. This is, I love this. My dad loved devotionals. And uh, so we put together this one a couple of years ago and it's called the daily light. He used to write these 
uh, to everybody, everybody in the family, the ministry, friends, all sorts of people got these emails. And so we gathered up the best of them and put them in a 31-day devotional. So if you give a gift today of any amount, we would love to send this to you. Uh, just make sure that you go to the website and click the banner just to let us know that you want it with your offering. And then also our new release this year is Prophetic Revelation, a collection of letters from the pen of Kim Clement. And let me tell you, as anointed as he was to prophesy and, and, and to worship, he also was anointed in the pen. And he loved to write, he had the most beautiful handwriting and wrote the most beautiful things. And we've collected a lot of this in, in, in this book that we've released this year. So for a gift of $25 or more, we're gonna send this to you. Just again, make sure that you go to the website and click the banner or use the QR code if you're okay with using QR codes and uh, we will send that to you because we want you to be blessed. We want you to understand the prophetic. That's what the house of destiny is, but understanding the prophetic. It's not just about uh, uh, random predictions and, and, and wowing people. There is purpose to it. And, and it is a gift that is in all of us. Maybe not in the way that it was in my dad. He was called to the office of the prophet. But if you are filled with the Spirit, it is a gift of, a Holy, of the Holy Spirit. And now is the time for us to unite and be the warriors of the new millennium that my dad saw so long ago and prophesied. And so again, I thank you so much for joining us today and stay tuned because we're gonna have a lot going on here at the House of Destiny Network all the way up to the election. We will be going to Washington, D.C. and Charlie Jordan will be with Christy and I. And we are going to pray there on that soil and uh, prophesy and proclaim again. And so you want to join us for that. And so again, thank you for joining us and we will be back next week.
pray. Watch and pray.
righteousness exalts a nation. And if you have people in office who are not righteous, it's very oppressive. And so why wouldn't people care? Not everybody is going to see everything eye to eye. You can look at the policies and say, well, this isn't perfect. It might not be perfect. It probably won't be because we're living in a fallen world. But which policies are the closest thing to what God wants? We're coming back to the scripture. We're coming back to the heart and character of God. And we're saying, which one's lining up and how should we vote as a Christian? Yeah. In true form, where should our hearts align? Should it be with the popularity vote? What makes people comfortable? Mm -hmm. Or what pushes through the agenda of heaven? Watch now at real-faith.tv. A large retail store just canceled a huge order leaving us with a ton of extra my pillows. But you know what? That's their loss. I'm going to make it your gain. For the first time ever, you get standard classic my pillows for wholesale prices. Only $14.88. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Only $14.88. But it gets even better. For a limited time, I'm going to offer my entire classic collection at wholesale prices. Upgrade to a queen size my pillow for just $18.88. King size, only a dollar more. Get my body pillows for $29.88 and multi-use my pillows for only $9.88. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on the screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of wholesale pricing for the first time ever on TV, including my standard size my pillow, only $14.88. They've never been offered this low before. We have limited quantities at this price, so limit's going to be 10 and once they're gone, they're gone. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to bh-pm.com, right there on the homepage, you'll see a form that you could fill out. And that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number, there's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement. And then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom. Usually within about, about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call. And then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable.